Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video I'll be showing you how to install Home Assistant on Docker. Now I've been think, trying to think of a, a video idea for a little while now um, and I was actually thinking of starting up a series. Well I've got all these Raspberry Pis that I kind of don't really do much with. Maybe play around with some Docker images on one of them every now and then but what I was thinking of making a, a video series about Home Assistant where we could build this dashboard, set it up um, as like the first video and then over the next couple of videos I can also bring in the Raspberry Pis and show you some automation and stuff we can do to integrate with Home Assistant um, and kind of what it can do. So what I kind of want to do at the moment is I am going to show you how to install it on a, well I'll be installing it on a Raspberry Pi but you'll be able to follow along just the same regardless of what you're on. But what I want to do before I show you the install, I kind of just want to show you what Home Assistant looks like. So here is actually a demo page. Uh, let me go full screen and try zoom in just a little bit. So as you can see, this is just a demo that they offer. But look at all the cool stuff that you can kind of set up, right? Where you can control the lights within the house through a single dashboard. Um, you know, if you've got temperature control, you can manage it all here. Uh, you can see what the temperature is in between rooms and that could be set up using like a Raspberry Pi that's t sending the temperature data back to you. Uh, the morning commute stuff, so even you don't have automation stuff set up, this all here could be set into, you know, uh, free to use API information that's on the internet um, and you can just build all this stuff up. Um, you see what's playing on a Chromecast, all of this cool stuff we can set up and we can build these cool little customized dashboards. So all I'm going to do for this video though is just show you how you can get it set up and up and running and then we can start having a look around what we can do in the next videos. Um, if that sounds good, let's get into it. So if you've watched my other videos installing like Docker containers and whatnot, you'll know that we'll be installing it via Docker Compose. And what I normally do is when I'm looking for a Docker container, I look for a container that's made by Linux server.io because they have really good support, especially when it comes around for the architecture for my Raspberry Pis. So if we come to tags here, you can see that they support my Raspberry Pi architecture. Whoops, I accidentally clicked on it. And since they support it, it just means it's so much easier to use. I don't have to go hunting around anywhere else. So they normally have a great um, range of containers, uh, container images, I should say. Anyway, enough talking. So what we want to do is we want to scroll down and we want to find this here. And I am going to use this. But I already have this all set up. So all I'm going to do is jump over to my server so we're going to log into a server that's got docker installed um, and we're going to just go over this file real quick and then we're going to spin up home assistant cool so i am on my raspberry pi uh, that has docker installed so now if i do an ls this is the structure that i have on my raspberry pi where i name each one of my containers with a directory name um, so that you can see home assistant here so if we change directory into home assistant do an ls I've got nothing there. So what we want to do is create that docker compose file with this information here. Let me zoom in so you can see. So we'll be using this information here. So what I'm going to do is do a nano docker compose.yaml, enter and paste that in. Now we can go through this. Now what you want to do is set your time zone in here. So I believe mine is, so I believe that's my time zone there. So just make sure you enter yours in. And then down here you want to set where your data will be in. So your local data on your host, where so my host is the equivalent of my Raspberry Pi, will be connecting onto my Docker container. So all I will do is change this to suit my current directory. So mount, uh, and then there'll be home assistant and then data so it's going to make it that data folder for me even though i haven't actually made it it will make it for me um, and then devices so this here i will leave some information in the uh comment uh, sorry in the description but so this here is so i could map uh my usb my, on my raspberry pi to my container so if i had anything plugged into my actual host uh so my linux machine sorry my raspberry pi um it could my container could see that but i'm not going to use any local devices most of my devices are going to be network devices so what i'm going to do is just remove this if you are wanting to use the devices and stuff i'll leave a link in the description on how you can go about setting uh mapping your usb devices uh to so your can container can see them so i've just uh, removed that section and i'm just going to have this one here so what i can do now is just go Control o enter Control x and now I can just do sudo docker-compose up 
hyphen D. Now I've mentioned what this command does many times, but I'll just explain it one more time. So what I'm doing is running docker compose up, which means it's looking for a docker compose file in the local directory. And I'm saying please deploy whatever you see in that docker compose file and then the hyphen D means it runs in detached so if I didn't have that hyphen D you'd see all the logs of the container spinning up and then if I were to close the container um, so close out of the all the information that's on the screen the container would shut down I want the container to continue running after the I close this terminal and everything like this so that's why I use hyphen D so now I hit enter and now it's creating a home assistant done so I already had the image uh, locally installed prior when I was playing around and testing with this. Uh, so yours will probably have to download it. But now what we can do is try and connect. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we've come into um, our internet browser. I've typed in the IP address of my Raspberry Pi with on port 8123. So that's the port we're going to be using to connect to Home Assistant. And if we hit enter, cool, look at that. We have now hit our Home Assistant login uh, setup page. So what we need to do is set up a user account. So we'll just go Nick, uh, username. Now uh, let's make a tech docs. We'll set it a super strong password. There we go. And hit create account. And there we go. So now name of your home assistant installation. I'll just call it home. Um, let's let it, uh, let's choose our time zone, uh, which is Pacific Auckland. That's all good. Uh, we're using metric. Yep. So next. And here it's saying, uh, share your installation information to help others, uh, to help make home assistant better and help us uh, convince manufacturers to add local control, blah, blah, blah. Um, so you can choose to share any of your information. I'm going to leave that out for now and I'm going to go next. And here you can see it's actually picked up a few things on my network already. So it's found my Google Chromecast and my printer that's right behind me. Um, that's all good. So, but I'm just going to hit uh, finish and I'll just scroll down a little bit. And look at that. We have our Home Assistant all set up and ready for us to continue playing around and exploring and adding more to it. But look at this. You can see that my weather straight away, um, the sun, the person that I'm logged into, and then anything we can add. So here we are on the map. It's got my home, which is apparently in the middle of the ocean, uh, just below Wellington. <laughs> Not quite where I am, but uh, yep, <laughs> that would do. Uh, we've got the logbook, so you can kind of see just general log and configuration that's been made. History, this is pretty cool. I guess this is just um, any like notifications and stuff that's gone off. Um, I'll be learning this as we go as well. And then media browser. So I'm guessing that's just anything within the data file we can access here as well. So that's awesome. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm going to leave it short and sweet for now. Otherwise this video will take on for ages. But this will be the first uh, video in the series. And we're going to build upon this and make it something really cool. Uh, so thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.